We showed at Australian Fashion Week. Still weird to say. It is, I know, yeah. I was trying to get the words out. It doesn't feel real, but it was something that we kind of never dreamed of. I never really thought that our work would have that sort of a platform. It's kind of made a bit of a splash and people are really excited about it. I'm Katie Louise Nicole Ford, and this is the love of my life. The two Aww. loves of my life, Timothy Nicole Ford and Maestro Nicole Ford. And we run a demi couture fashion label called Nicole and Ford. Mm -hmm. Our style is eclectic and ever evolving. Mm. I mean, we've been together for 10 years and- Yes, it's been 10, has it? It's, yeah, it's been a decade, baby. <laughs> I think, I mean, we feel very empowered by the way that we dress mm. and that is why we dress the way that we do. I think it can be both serious and playful. I don't think that dressing necessarily has to be picking one side of that coin. Yeah, we don't take ourselves very seriously. No, yeah. we look ridiculous half the time. We know it <laughs> and that's great. You're never gonna figure out your style unless you- Do it wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's so healthy to look at photos of yourself and think, oh God, I look awful. Oh God, I had eyebrows, ugh. <laughs> we started Nickel and Ford in 2017, it's just after we got married. I was a frustrated arts student from like an academic framework with lots of ideas, but no practical skills of how to make anything. And Katie is one of the those- opposite. Well, <laughs> one of those people who just can kind of pick things up and make them. We have really worked together to develop quite a stamp that is very complex. Each collection for Nickel and Ford is based on a queer figure of history that has been erased because of their identity. So Written we really- the books. Yeah. There's lots of them. There We've got are. lots of material to work <laughs> we with. We do. <laughs> <laughs> the collection we developed for Fashion Week this year was titled Le Pouf. It was inspired by a complete nutbag of the 20th century, I think, uh, called Carlos de Bestigui. He had lavish homes. He worked with a Mexican interior designer on fitting out, like queer aesthetics being introduced into blank spaces almost as like a provocation to the expectations of modernism in the 20th century. In the lead up to Fashion Week, we were making 18 garments uh, from scratch. It was- Sounds wild saying it. <laughs> yeah, over, I think 12 weeks we had. It's the 48 hour mark. Oh, don't even say that. No, or, no, we're at like 52 hours from the runway. So I'm working on the look that's going to open the show. It's designed to look like a padded couch that is kind of disintegrating or falling apart and falling off the body. So this has all been hand smocked with repurposed pearls we pull off something else and then applied to this ridiculous base. Before the <laughs> blue velvet was on here, it did look a lot like a potato sack. It's one of these things where you have to really think of the end product and trust the process. Le Pouf was predominantly made out of found materials mm -hmm. that we've collected over the last three years, I would say. A lot of pieces that you found at auctions. I think one of the most interesting pieces was the curtain that you found in a back lane in Centennial Park. Yeah. <laughs> and I picked it up and it had mold spots through it and it stunk of Winnie Blues. <laughs> and I just took a risk, we brought it home, we pulled it all apart, picked the backing off it and chucked it through the wash. This suit is gonna be a really special moment for us. It's going to be a moment in history. It's the first trans male model ever walking at Australian Fashion Week, to our knowledge. <laughs> a lot of people build the collection and they bring in the cast and they just put it on bodies. And that's how the industry predominantly works and that's a valid way of doing it, but it's never gonna really embrace diversity in its fullest sense. You know, the main difference of how we work is that we start with our casting. So each look is specifically built for the model that will be wearing it. And we work exclusively with within our community, the queer communities. The night before Fashion Week, we'd had one hour sleep. So we ran to Carriage Works. I jumped straight into it and was hand sewing on the floor, I would say until about 10 minutes before the models walked out. Mm. Nicole was really managing everything else that was happening. It was very chaotic. 
we had no idea what to expect, but it was an overly full house. And we were also told prior that, you know, runways are often very quiet, kind of solemn. So when the first model stepped onto the runway and we heard cheering, our hearts just melted and the models were coming back up and saying that people were crying, which was, I mean, we were both in tears at that point <laughs> as well, isn't it? Oh, it's very hard to pick a favorite, but Jack in the chartreuse gown was such- It was a moment. It was a moment. Jack the back. Jack the I... crack, more like. <laughs> I mean, it's so good. That's something we've put in our work before. It's a bit of a signature of our work now, that um, particular gown cleavage. shape. It's just been really lovely to celebrate with our community. Yeah. Being able to do something is such a powerful possibility for people. And so if they see our work and they, it just helps them recast their mind around the expectations they place on themselves or what they feel comfortable or able to do, even just once and try it and decide they don't Absolutely. like it. It's more yeah. about having options um, and knowing that there is a lot of space for movement and change and freedom.